Today we have an intriguing topic to discuss, the curious case of perioperative polypharmacy and why no one knows that there is an IV formulation of ibuprofen, the most commonly used NSAID. In this video, I will argue that not using IV ibuprofen intraoperatively is a mistake. And if you watch the video to the end, you will witness the results of an astonishing survey on Isora's YouTube channel, which was filled out by thousands of anesthesiology professionals. So get your notepads and let's dive in. The multimodal analgesia protocols during perioperative period have been adopted worldwide, and this typically involves a combination of acetaminophen, local anesthetic, NSAIDs and opioids with or without some form of regional anesthesia. Now here's where it gets really interesting. Ketorolac and diclofenac as well as paracoxep, which is still used in Malaysia and Australia, are often standard in the intraoperative regimen. However, these medications are rarely used by patients outside of the hospital. But hold on a second, let's think about this. This does not make any sense. Why give ketor like IV when once patients are discharged home, they typically transition to oral ibuprofen for pain management? Doesn't it seem a bit odd to switch from one intravenous analgesic during surgery and hospitalization to another oral analgesic postoperatively? By using this practice, we unintentionally contribute to perioperative polypharmacy the use of multiple medications in a short span of time. And with that, we introduce a potential for a greater risk of side effects when utilizing two different analgesics instead of sticking to one for both intraoperatively and at patients' homes after discharge. Most practices I have visited use IV toradol or ketorolac intraoperatively for joint replacement surgery, say, as a part of a multimodal analgesia protocol. And this is odd because as patients are discharged homes, most commonly they transition to oral ibuprofen. I never thought about this until I found out that IV ibuprofen is actually available. In the poll of Nysora's community, which we posted on Nysora's YouTube, I was totally surprised to learn that 70% of the poll takers do not have access to IV ibuprofen in their practice and 9% of the respondents were not even sure whether IV ibuprofen is actually available. This is surprising because it makes sense to simplify and treat acute pain both intraoperatively and postoperatively with one analgesic that most patients know how to dose at home. The reality is that ibuprofen is the most commonly used oral NSAIDs and the patients know whether they tolerate it and which dose and administration regimen works best for them. So here are my top eight reasons why we should consider using IV ibuprofen as the first line analgesia, both intraoperatively and orally postoperatively for analgesia. Click the link below to get your hands on Nysora's best-selling book on Amazon. As is the case with other NSAIDs, ibuprofen significantly reduces postoperative pain and opiate consumption, particularly in orthopedic patients. Ibuprofen has a lower cardiovascular risk compared to other NSAIDs, like ketorolac. Research suggests that the risk of hospitalization due to heart failure is lower with ibuprofen. This makes it a safer choice for patients, particularly those at high risk of cardiovascular complications. Ibuprofen is among the NSAIDs with the lowest risk of upper GI complications. This makes ibuprofen an ideal NSAID for patients with the risk of gastrointestinal bleeding and cardiovascular complications, as shown by this recent publication by Bello and colleagues. Ibuprofen has a well-documented synergy with acetaminophen or paracetamol. IV ibuprofen can be safely combined with IV paracetamol in a multimodal analgesia strategy for a greater analgesic and opioid sparing effect compared to the individual agents. IV ibuprofen is approved for use and beneficial also in pediatric patients and patients with fever due to its antipyretic effect. Ibuprofen is indicated and often used on a longer term therapy with a lower risk of side effects, while ketorolac is only indicated for short term therapy, usually less than five days. This makes ibuprofen an ideal IV NSAIDs for both short-term intravenously use perioperatively and a transition to oral ibuprofen in patients' homes after discharge. IV ibuprofen can be seamlessly transitioned to oral ibuprofen, which is what the most patients will use postoperatively 
anyway. Using one NSAIDs intravenously, intraoperatively or perioperatively and transitioning to the same NSAIDs postoperatively orally avoids polypharmacy with the risks associated with the polypharmacy. In summary, I cannot think of a better and more intuitive choice of perioperative IV analgesic than IV ibuprofen, which appears to be off the radar for most anesthesiology practitioners, and yet it is widely available worldwide and a well-known classic NSAID. Thank you for sticking with us as we uncover the possible reasons behind perioperative analgesia practices and the unintentional case of polypharmacy. And remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts in the comments below. And stay tuned for more exciting discussions. Until next time.